What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'll be sharing with you guys some of the softwares and tools that I've installed for 2021 that I'll be using on a daily basis. So without wasting any time, let's get started. Um, first things first, the computer that I use is the 13 inch MacBook Pro, uh, the 2019 version. I bought this last year for school. Um, so it basically does almost everything that I needed to do. It runs a 1.4 gigahertz processor, like an i5 processor. It's a quad core processor, so that's pretty good. And then it, it has um, eight gigabytes of memory. So without wasting any time, let's just get started with the softwares. So I've split the softwares into two sections. Um, first, general and productivity. So these are the softwares that anybody can use. And then secondly, the tools and softwares that I use as a junior software developer. So the first tool that I use under the general and productivity section is my browser. The browser that I use is the Brave browser. So this is a privacy focused browser for its users and takes a different approach on advertising. More about that in a few. Um, so the Brave browser was co-founded by Brandon Icke. Some of you guys might know Brandon Icke as one of the co-founders or founders of JavaScript, the JavaScript programming language specifically. So it is the perfect alternative to the Chrome browser as they are both built on Chromium. So it also includes uh, additional tools such as built-in ad blockers and tracker blockers as some websites actually track you while you're online. So it's great that it has that built in. And also it has built-in advertisements and I'll still talk about that in a second. Um, so one of the number one things that most devs um, use on Chrome is basically the dev tools. So um, luckily the Brave browser has uh, the dev tools since it's, it's built on Chromium. So if it wasn't for that, otherwise I'd still be using Chrome, but since it has the dev tools, then why not switch? So one of the things that differentiates Brave from all the other browsers is it has its own cryptocurrency called BAT, short for basic attention token. For, so for you to get these crypto coins on the browser, it's optional. Um, you can either buy them or you can also opt in for getting ads. And then by you watching these ads, then you can just get these crypto coins. Another great thing is that these coins can also be rewarded to your favorite sites and creators. Another great thing about the Brave browser is that 70% um, of its revenue is given back to its users and then they only keep 30%. Also, another thing that I use on, on the Brave browser is um, um, DuckDuckGo as my search engine, which also just increases my privacy on another level as well. So with my communication tools, one of the tools that I use is Teams. This is for school. Um, it's okay. It's not perfect, but yeah, um, I don't want to talk about much about it. So I think we all use these tools nowadays, Zoom, Skype, etc. No, I don't think we still use Skype though, but yeah, <laughs> I don't think Skype still exists, but okay. <laughs> Um, but but my preferred tool that I use for communication and collaboration is mainly Discord. So with that one, I get to communicate with my friends, colleagues, etc. And one of the reasons why I use Discord is mainly for the number of communities I have signed up to that have people who share common interests. To name a few groups, I've joined a Python development group, a web development group, and another interesting one is a comics group. So it's just a lot of groups that you can join in, in Discord. So if you really just want to meet new people, Discord is your go-to. So the next application that I'm about to talk about is basically one of the best applications that I've ever downloaded in a very long time. And its, pro its approach on productivity is the best I've seen so far. So um, that application is basically Notion. So when it comes to time, task and project management, I have always used many different tools for these purposes. So sometimes I've even gone as far as using the stock notes app that comes with your phone and you know it's bad when you start using the notes app. <laughs> However, all of that has changed when I downloaded Notion. So I've, I've been using Notion for about a year now. Um, it has, it basically contains 
all of those things that I've mentioned that I mentioned previously all in one. So basically Notion is an all in one workspace for everything I need to do on a daily basis. If I need to take notes, draft a script, make a to-do list, journal or anything, I use Notion. The great thing is that it also includes a mobile application. So anything I write on my computer is automatically synced to my mobile app. So if I need to update anything on the go, I can do that from my phone. So there are templates that you can download and use with the app which save you a lot of time. One of my favorites is the Cornell note-taking template. Since I've started taking notes using the Cornell note-taking system, there's a lot more you can learn and discover about Notion. I can even make a dedicated video on how I use Notion to increase my productivity to the max. So I think I'll, I think I'll probably make a video about this, about how I use Notion for maximum productivity. So if you want to see that video, just hit the like button down below and just comment Notion. And I'll note that and I'll make a video about it, definitely. So when it comes to creating mobile apps, websites, or anything similar, um, design is very important, which is why I had to have a software that helps me design or mock up anything on the go super quick. So, which is why I had to go with Adobe XD. So I use Adobe XD mainly for creating my mockups and prototyping. It's basically one of the easiest ways to kind of see your idea come to life before you even start development. One other common tool that most people use is Sketch. Uh, I haven't really tried using Sketch that much. Although, all I do know is um, Adobe, when I use Adobe XD compared to Sketch, um, Adobe XD proved to be way much better and it's basically, it basically works. Um, so yeah, Adobe XD is perfect for me. So I use that for my designs. So section two is dedicated to my software development tools. So these are the tools that I use on a daily basis. Can't go a day without using either of these tools. So yeah, um, okay, I might have lied. Um, I don't use GitHub desktop every day, so <laughs> that was a lie, <laughs> but yeah, um, so I use, although I do use Git, so GitHub, I use GitHub online though, um, so that counts though, I'm, I'm pretty sure that counts, so yeah, I use GitHub desktop, <laughs> I, use, I use GitHub a lot, not GitHub desktop. I can't remember the last time I opened it. I think I opened it like two days ago. That was the last time I opened it. But yeah, um, but it's on the list, so I have it. So I mainly use um, GitHub Desktop for cloning rep repositories just by searching it. Um, but usually if I, if I want to clone a repository, I just clone it via terminal. So I don't know why I still have this. I might delete it soon because it's kind of useless if I, don't, if I hardly use it, if I use it sometimes. So I might delete that one. So let's just exclude GitHub desktop. You don't need it. I don't think you really need it that much. Another tool that I use a lot since I work with the Mern stack a lot um, is, is MongoDB Campus. So I use MongoDB Campus a lot to basically um, view my databases on the go without having to log on to Atlas on the internet. And so I can make changes to my databases on the go with using MongoDB Atlas. It's pretty easy to use. All you need to do is just have your connection string and then you just put it on there. And then after that, you log onto your database. So it's pretty easy. It saves me a whole lot of time. Otherwise, if I have to go on the internet, then that's a whole lot of time. As programmers, we're really lazy. So if we wanna do something much easier, if something can be done much easier, then why not do that? So yeah, um, I use that a lot. Um, um, so another great alternative that I've usually used to connect to my MongoDB servers is um, Robo3P. No, no, not Robo3P, Robo3T. Um, so it's a great alternative to using MongoDB Campus. Um, I, I use that a lot as well. So another tool that I use a lot, usually when I'm working with my back end, is Postman. Um, so Postman is what I use for API testing and development. It's one of the most popular choices out there for building APIs. However, I, however, I have been looking into using other API testing tools. Um, and one that I bumped into was Insomnia. So Insomnia has a much easier and friendly user interface as compared to um, Postman. So if you wanna try a different tool that you can use for um, API testing or you want to just 
have something that's much more friendly and easier as postman's user interface is basically filled with a lot of stuff so it can get a little overwhelming i'd compare it to using a text editor versus using an ide an ide is more complex and a text editor is much more friendly and easier to use um so yeah um insomnia and postman definitely a great example of ide versus text editor so i might though um switch to insomnia pretty soon if it convinces me but so far i'm using postman and it's been working great so text editors my preferred text editor of choice is visual studio code um i know it's very common out there um but i have a few reasons however as to why i use visual studio code um so one of the reasons why i use visual studio code is the integrated git and debugging tools and also the community that it has it also has thus it has a lot of extensions that you can use for you can use for almost anything i mean it even has an extension for for tinder for okay for code tinder so you date people based so you get to meet new people based on whatever code they use so uh actually one of the creators of this application is ben alwood i think i'm pronouncing that right but yeah ben alwood if you want to go check out um tinder to, I, i'm not sure what he calls it but it, i know it's tender for code um so you should definitely check it out install it on your visual studio and it's great it's amazing um i think he has over forty thousand users by now so there's a lot of there are a lot of people that use it there are a lot of people that use it so visual studio code great text editor although sometimes i do tend to use sublime text Although I deleted recent, I deleted it recently because I didn't use it for a very long time. But sometimes I'll download it if I need it. Um, but I don't know when I'll need it. So yeah, Visual Studio Code is um, Sublime as well. So Visual, so Sublime as well. I do use that as well sometimes. Um, so my IDE, my IDE of choice currently is PyCharm as I'm using Python for now. Um, however, JetBrains makes some of the best IDEs out there, which is why when I was programming using Java, I went for the IntelliJ IDE. So one of the reasons why I use Py PyCharm is because it's feature rich. So it has um, some of the best features such as code completion, both for built-in and external packages. In addition, for in addition, it also has code completions for SQL and databases, so which is perfect for when I'm working with databases. Although I would advise that when you are a beginner, right, in in coding, um, the number one thing that most people would advise you do is get used to using a text editor, as a text editor doesn't have those auto completions. So it allows you to think a little bit more about what you actually want. And then when you get more in intermediate and you know what you actually want, then you just get to use these great features of auto completion. But sometimes, man, if you just want to use auto completion on the go, just go ahead. Just go ahead and use it. You can even say you're using VS Code as well. You can even just install um, an extension for auto completion for your preferred language. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so even though people say use the text editor first, yeah, it's whatever. <laughs> so another great thing that Py that Python has is is easy package management. I know what some of you guys are really thinking. Did you have the terminal? Why not use pip? But sometimes it's just much easier to just have uh, uh, to just have a feature that allows you to just search your package and install it on the go instantly. Um, so yeah, um, pack. So if you can have a package manager, why not? You know, just an added bonus suite. Another feature that it has that's great is Git visualization, um, which al is Git visualization allowing you to see changes that have happened or taken place since your last commit. So, um, so one thing I know for sure is that PyCharm still has a lot of great features. So there are a lot more tools that you can use on PyCharm and you can explore those options by just going on the JetBrains website and getting PyCharm for yourself. And that's if you're using Python currently, if you're, or if you're still learning Python, then you can consider using um, PyCharm. But otherwise, if you like the video, just hit the thumbs up button and you can hit the red button right below that. 
if you want to but otherwise so leave a comment about your favorite application that you use on your computer and then i'll be sure to check it out so if you really like the video do the right thing um otherwise um i'll see you next time Doop. Jeez, that was so up close, dude.